Hey everyone, either welcome back or welcome to my channel. And in today's video, I want to actually cover what IIH actually is because I've noticed that I've done a lot of videos on it now but haven't really directly explained what IIH is. So before I get too far into any details, Time for the intro. Hey everyone, my name is Ashley Stewart. So 2018 was actually a pretty hard year for me, but it was also a pretty good year too. So I completed my bachelor's degree in biochemistry, but at the same time, I was also diagnosed with a rare condition called idiopathic intracranial hypertension or IIH. Some of you may also know this by its older name called pseudotumor cerebri. So if you're curious to learn more, about what it's like to live with this rare condition, then I encourage you to watch on. Don't forget to subscribe, and I upload new content every Monday and Thursday afternoon. I've noticed that <laughs> I don't have a specific video talking ex about exactly what IIH actually is and what exactly is going on with people who have this condition. So, I've decided to actually do a video where I explain exactly what's going on. I've talked about the statistics, I've talked about symptoms a lot, and particularly what I experience because that's what I talk about is my experiences on this channel, and the treatment that I've personally been through myself. IIH is short for idiopathic intracranial hypertension. This is also maybe known to some of you of pseudotumor cerebri. You may also know it as benign intracranial hypertension. They've removed the benign because there are long-term effects of not having treatment of the condition. So it's not benign. It mimics a tumor, but there's no tumor. There's secondary intracranial hypertension, so that's when they determined a cause for someone's intracranial hypertension. There's quite a few names for intracranial hypertension, and I have the one that's called idiopathic intracranial hypertension. If you ever come across the word idiopathic in any medical terminology, it means with unknown origin or unknown cause. I believe I did put that in the description of my welcome to my channel video. It kind of describes what kind of videos I do. IIH is when there's a large amount of pressure in the brain, basically. So in idiopathic intracranial hypertension, it's another fluid dynamics type of situation. So if you've taken physics, you'll kind of understand what I mean. So the narrower the space and the more fluid that is present, the higher the pressure will be. We have no idea what is the reason why some of us get this condition. It does appear as the incidence is going up, but my opinion on this is that they're becoming more aware of it. Now we also have know that there's a correlation between weight and IIH, and we know that the obesity issue is becoming, well, it is already epidemic. So the fact that you have those two things where doctors are more aware of it and the fact that the obesity rate of obesity is increasing so so much in the population probably is leading to an increase in more people getting diagnosed with it but awareness helps under normal circumstances your f spinal fluid is consistently made and it's consistently drank under IIH it's made and then it builds up and builds up and builds up. If you were to say this to a lot of people, they think it has to do with something with blood pressure in the head, it doesn't. I actually like people referring it as pseudotumor cerebri because it does mimic the brain, the symptoms of a tumor. People take it a little bit more seriously because I think the language of idiopathic intracranial hypertension kind of 
freaks a lot of people out when they hear it. They hear three very big words and they're like, what? I know when I first heard, I was first given intracranial hypertension. I couldn't rule it as idiopathic until they had every all the testing done, but my MRI showed signs of raised intracranial pressure. I kind of wish I would have pushed everything a little bit harder, but in a way, I've learned so much from experiencing this, whether it be you know dealing with chronic invisible illnesses, whether it be just understanding what it's like to be in pain a lot. It changes you in a, in a way that is hard to describe to a lot of people. And I wouldn't change anything. I don't even think I'd change the part of being sick in school. It gave me so much motivation to finish. And honestly, I think I did better under the pressure that I was under. That's a bad phrasing, but I think it went a little bit better because I knew that I had to finish my degree when I did or I probably wouldn't. And so I I learned so much about myself in those few months that I was sick that I don't think I would change it given the opportunity now. I would maybe be a completely different person and I don't know because and also the medication is very very hard on you at the start with the acetazolamide I had so many side effects for like it was probably three or four months before I got used to the acetazolamide to the point where my body was used to it so it's not fun. If you guys have anything that you would like to add to the comments, feel free to leave a comment down below. And as for now, that's it for today. Bye everyone.